properties. Okay, so it looks like my mic is working. Still no sound. What the heck is going on? Okay, one second. Still no sound. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, testing. Yes, no. Sound now. Yes. All right, good. Um, yay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Oh, maybe because we had a power outage the other day. And um, so I think it's messed up the the program anyway so we're back in business i've got my sound happy wednesday everybody um feeling a little bit rough around the edges today i had my booster yesterday and uh yeah i didn't sleep too well but anyway here we go so last week we did basically a wash on um everything the bells are mostly I think the bells are pretty much complete, but we st we have a lot to do on the leather, and I wanted to get this lovely sort of rustic wooden table in here as well. So I'm going to come in and uh, start developing these shapes in here, and I guess a little bit more on that buckle as well. So I was pointing out that I made notes, thank goodness, of all the colors that I used last week so that I would remember, because I know that if a, um, you know, if I, if I tried to rely, rely on my memory, <laughs> it's not a good idea. So, um, so I have my colors, uh, written down from last week. It's, it's not a bad habit to get into because, you know, you think you're going to remember and then you don't. Oh yeah, Deborah, you can catch the, the replay. That's no problem. Uh, yeah. Hi, Monica. Rita. Cheryl? Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. When you guys, you know, probably have a million things to do for Christmas, I'm, I'm flattered that you're here. All right, so I am going to come in and start developing. Let's move this up a little bit. Okay, my palette's kind of a mess here, but um, I can work with some of the colors in here. Now, the, the, um, the leather's very... Um, very old. It's very worn. So it's not very bright in color. I did have some brighter areas in here, but um, in here I started doing a bit of um, a little bit of dry brushing to give that old look. So I'm going to get a little permanent rose, a little bit of raw sienna, because I don't want it too pink. Uh, you know, permanent rose is pretty pink. No sound? Again? Oh dear. Um, some people are saying that they're having sound and some are saying that it's not. <laughs> so, do you? I hope you can hear me. I don't know who to believe. Uh, All right, so I'm coming in with, you know, kind of a dull red color here. I will use some paper towel for, for blotting because I don't want to have so much in here that I can't do a um, bit of dry brush in here. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of this and I want my brush to skip over. So I'm painting kind of with the side of my brush. Let's blot it a little bit more. And see, I can get these, these patches, which is kind of what I'm looking for. And it may look pretty bright at the moment, but it's always going to dull down a little bit as and get lighter as it dries. So just coming in here with some 
the side of my brush, using the side of my brush so that I get a little bit of dry brush, so that I get those those little bits that are broken up in the, you know, where the leather's worn and old. Okay, so coming around that belt buckle. I guess it's not a belt buckle, it's a buckle of some kind, but um, okay, so that is coming together. I'm going to get up here into some of this area as well and do the same sort of thing. And see how I'm using the side of my brush to get that really old, worn look? I've already got some darks established in here because um, I did do a little bit of kind of purpley gray color underneath before. And I want to leave the edges of the, the leather, you know, where the cut edge is. Okay, thank you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe Deb maybe somebody could type to Deborah to check her um, computer sound. Maybe she's got her own volume off. And um, I'm going to come in here with a little bit more of this dry brushing. This all adds to the oldness of this. Not a lot of paint in my brush. It's fairly dry. This is a, some of them are a little bit more um, gold, not quite as red, so they're a little more gold. So I'm putting a little bit more of the raw sienna into some of these, and um, and I'm going to come in along. There's a whole lot of stuff in here, and I'm not really sure what's happening with it. It's um, like I don't know exactly what kind of a harness this is, but it's uh, I'm following what I'm seeing. And while I have this raw sienna, I think I'm going to come in and do a wash on my table. So my tables, I'm going to start with this lighter color here. That one's going to go down first, then the darker colors like this will go on after. So I'm going to use a fair bit of raw sienna here. Fairly thin though, because I really want my first washes to be uh, um, light and allow the paper to show through. And I think I can pretty much paint everything. I am. <clears throat> I'm opting to leave out, there's, I don't know, a couple of little dough ornaments here of birds or something. I'm going to leave those out because I don't think that they're really contributing anything. But I'm going to go around this and basically just do a wash everywhere of this raw sienna. Really loading up my brush here with wet paint. You know, unlike the dry brushing I was using up here, I'm using a really wet paint here so that I get a uniform wash without brush marks. All right, and this is really just going to be very pale um, by the time it dries. Trying to go neatly around the, the bells themselves. But and as I said, I'm gonna leave the um, the little 
birds or whatever they are out of it. Basically, I'm just getting rid of that white paper so I can I'm just going to come right in here, fill that area in. All right, so I'll take my paper towel. I'm going to wipe off my tape. Because I need a little bit more right here. Okay, and being an old, old table like this, it certainly doesn't need to be a perfect wash. You can see it's, you know, a little imperfect, but that's perfectly fine because it's not perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> good morning, Melody. Okay. Um, so, I am going to uh, keep on with some of the uh, building up of the uh, leather here. There's some really dark areas. I think I'm going to add a little more Payne's Gray to this. Getting to be quite a dirty mess here, but coming in here a little bit darker. And I want to make sure that I have a hard line right here. So I'm going to just take a blotted brush and just build that up a little bit. But these little scratchy bits here, I actually want that because that kind of looks like old leather. So there's going to be a lot of darks I'm going to have to start putting in here. Um, I'm going to come in with some Payne's Gray here really darkening up that reddish leather color here and I want to start establishing my darks a little bit stronger. There's a lot of ways of going about this kind of thing but for me personally I like to um, I like to ease into my values and uh, layer them up. I find I get a little bit more richness as I go All right, really getting some of those shadows a bit darker. And I'm going to go darker still. All right, so there are some, some really dark spots in here, and I want to identify where they are. I guess that's another part of the leather right here on this side. So I'm going to come back to my leather color here and get some of that in. Um, all right, so I'm going to start. This is already dry enough. I think I can come in and start building some of the darks in here edge of the table there. And if I squint my eyes. I have to sometimes squint my eyes to look at my reference because I see this is a little darker than this. So I'm going to come in here and darken this. Um, don't know what that is. Uh, I won't draw too much attention to that. Right about here. So some of this I'd, I didn't draw. I just am using my brush to create it. I'm 
we'll just fill that in and I'll put those darks in after. Alright, so I'm going to start establishing some of my darks a little bit more. And this is where it really starts to get the volume. Um, I got Moderna this time. I got Pfizer the first two times, and this time I got Moderna. But I was actually really sick after the second boot, the second shot. First one, no problem. Second one, I was sick. This one, just, I couldn't sleep. That seems to be the, the thing. Cold and dark. Ugh. I think we are going to have a green Christmas. Don't think it's going to get cold enough for snow. Although I did see a few flo flakes in the air this morning. Uh, but not much. Okay, so I'm going to come in and the side of the table here, or the wood, is a little bit darker, more golden, so I'm going to come in here with some of that raw sienna. And a lot of this coloring is very similar to um, to the belt itself, so it's, it's going to have some of this red in here. And this time, when I come in here, I'm going to start, um, again, painting with the side of my brush. Let's blot it. I'm going to paint with the side of my brush to get the texture of the wood. But, even though I'm working around these shapes, I have to keep, like, the grain of the wood still has to follow a straight line. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm usually really good about these things, but I don't, I don't know. I never even heard of insomnia as a symptom, but not. I tried and tried, could not get to sleep last night. So. I am using the side of my brush here to um, create the wood grain. And I will probably do this a number of times. Some areas are a little bit more smooth, like this one. I won't attempt to make it identical. Um, there's no need, but if I wanted to, I could really slow it down and we could have like a five hour video here, but that's not gonna happen today. Um, always slight variations in the wood, like, it, you know, it's almost a little purplish down here, then it gets a little more brown and so on. And so I'm gonna be glazing in a little bit more color into some of this as I go. Trying to be careful not to put the wood grain on top of my bell. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Okay, this is getting a little more orange, so I'm going to take a little bit more of the raw sienna. permanent rose. Get this a little bit more warm. Slight differences, you know, it's not a lot, it's just a, just enough. But I want to come around the shape of the bell here. This is always the tricky part, you know, you're trying to keep the wood grain going in one direction, but you're working around another subject. Come around this and 
continue in that same, you know, the same direction here for this wood grain. Sometimes I have to just kind of start with my brush on an angle, but pull it sort of almost on a diagonal to uh, create that, that wood grain and keep it consistent. Now this is going to look a little bit patchy when I first do it, and that's par for the course, but I can glaze over top of this and really start sort of harmonizing what I'm putting down, pulling it together. Um, <clears throat> there's some real darks under, I guess that's another piece of strap there. I'm going to come in underneath there. With a little more Payne's Gray in my mixture. And this is the way that I tend to work. Um, I like to work and sort of do a light layer first and then sort of step, step back and I can sort of visualize what it is I'm doing um, and whether I'm heading in the right direction because it's a lot easier to uh, make a correction when it's in this sort of lighter stage than after things get really dark, you know, when you've built up a lot of color and that sort of thing. So. All right, and this table continues back here in this corner. Same sort of direction. <clears throat> There we go. All right, so I can come in and start picking out a few little um, details here, maybe. I'll come in and get some of these darks underneath. Again, I'm trying to use almost the side of my brush for some of this in order to get the, um, you know, that wood look. All right. So, oh, good morning. Merry Christmas to you, Betty. Um, For those of you that are interested in um, in my full-length workshops, I, I have updated. I have got um, new workshops available on my website. So if you want to check that out right here at ShellyPrior.com, you can check those out. Uh, and the difference between what I'm doing here and the full-length workshops is that you get all the information. You get the colors that I'm using, you get the um, uh, <clears throat> line drawings, you get uh, reference image, you get uh, all the progress pictures and the live video, uh, which you can access forever. All right, so I'm coming in with you know, more layers here, getting this a little bit more golden, it's turning out a little bit flat in color as it dries. So I'm bringing in a little bit more of this raw sienna, get it a little bit more warm. And again, in order to get this tucked underneath the bell, I have to almost angle my brush. Right? The one thing I do not want to do is take my brush and run a line around it, and I know that that's sort of your knee-jerk reaction to uh, to doing that. 
Um, you know, it seems like the logical thing to do, but don't do it. It doesn't look very convincing. So coming in around here, just basically repeating the first steps, just changing up my colors a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit more red on some of this. All this can get a little bit darker in here. So it's kind of at the ugly stage at the moment, um, but when the darks start coming in, it will, uh, you know, you'll, that's when you kind of turn the corner and things start looking a little bit better. A little more reddish under here. Maybe that's now that part of that is probably because the the wood is that color, but also it's probably reflecting a little bit of this leather color here as well. So you can see this is a pretty good sort of underpainting for um, the final steps that we'll put on here. Um, When I start getting some of the real darks in here, that's when things will really start happening. You know, it's like what last week when we did the bell, it didn't really look like much up until I put the darks on there, right? Same sort of thing. But the temptation is always to get them in there because you really want it to look like what you want it to look like. And um, there's a really good chance that you're going to put detail in before that you're finished all your washes. Yeah, I like the, I like the glow on the bells too. You know that they actually have uh, that brassy uh, reflection of things in the room. This was actually a, a very overcast day when I was there, so it wasn't like sun in the room. I think it was just the, the brassy color. Um, what's left of it anyway, it's pretty um, oxidized. All right, so just going to keep coming in and, and building up some of these layers. Going to get a little bit more a bit more red in there. Okay, I'm going to blot. I don't want to have too much in my brush. All right. Got to be careful with my hand. And if this is getting a little bit more brown, a bit more of the Payne's Gray mixed into it, because Payne's Gray has a lot of blue in it, so that will make it a little bit more brown. Whoops, that was a little more color than I wanted, but just spread that out. Rinse and blot and spread that out. And I like to put, you know, a little bit of the detail in there early, not not detail like with the point of my brush, but you know, imply the textures and things like that because um, <clears throat> it I'll be able to see through um, the layers that I put on top, and that sort of builds a little more richness in my in my wood grain. So I'm going to come in with a little more color here. blot so that it doesn't get too too much of a smooth even wash. I don't really want that. So 
So it's pretty much at an ugly stage at the moment, but if I keep going, it will build up. That was a little too much. I want to try to keep my brush so that it will skim over the texture of the paper and give me the, um, um, you know, the effect that I'm looking for. All right, so hang in there. It's going to come together, hopefully, uh, very shortly when the darks start coming in. Tricky to get around some of this stuff, but I'm trying to do the best I can. Slightly different color than the leather. The leather's a little more, um, it's a little cooler, so it's more of a pinky purple kind of color than the wood grain, which is a little bit more on the orange brown, like a warm brown kind of family. Uh, so we'll go back in here too. All right, so I'm going to come in and start building up a little bit more um, value here. So a little bit more of all of those colors. Permanent Rose, Raw Sienna, Payne's Gray. The three of them make kind of a dirty color, but um, that's what we're not looking for fresh, clean, pure color here, uh, which would make it look a little bit too strange. Wouldn't, wouldn't fit the subject matter. That's a little wet, so have to be careful here. All right, so I'm going to make sure I'm building up some of these darks as well. So I'm going to get a little more Payne's Gray and come into these areas underneath the bell where it needs to be a lot darker, right? I need to build this up. And the colors that are underneath will help with the, um, you know, the fact that this looks layered on top, not just a strange little shape that I put in around it. So I'm going to rinse and blot my brush, soften this edge a little bit. There's actually like sort of two light sources here, so there's actually two separate shadows, which is what happens when you have two different light sources. All right, so that's getting a lot darker there. And as I go along, I'll get braver and start putting more darks in here. So All right, rinse, blot, and soften this edge a little bit. Try not to have a very crisp edge there. Um, it looks a little more dimensional if I don't have it too crisp. All right, so now I'm, I'm really getting into some of my thicker paint here. Um, thicker meaning that I've got less water added to it. Not necessarily thick and creamy like an acrylic, but um, thicker in terms of uh, less water. Okay, so there's some real darks that are happening in here. But again, I want to rinse and blot and soften out this as it, it starts to make this curve. I don't want to have an abrupt end to that shadow because it won't look like it's curved. It'll look like an angle. So I need to make sure that I'm softening that out.
You can really start to begin and see the, the dimensionality once these extra darks go in. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the classes that I teach where I have like students and stuff, um, you know, like new students, new watercolor artists, um, they're always a little afraid of this dark, uh, going this dark. Ugh. So I'm slowly building up. Coming along this edge here and sort of stretching out that color to, to give me that wood grain effect. don't want to do too much detail here like I don't want to make it as sort of dark and prominent here um, since I don't really know what this is here um, I just know that it's something dark down here so I'm going to come in here but I'll probably wash over top of this in order to sort of tone it down set it back um, design wise that will keep your eye from focusing on an area with a lot of detail. So, um, although I'm making it kind of detailed right now, I will wash over this and tone it, it, sort of push it back into the background a little bit more. So, mostly paints gray here, but I am mixing it in with some of this brown to keep it a little bit warm. And I'm basically coming in and creating some of these darker shadows like under the leather here. Okay, going to rinse. I, now it kind of looks like a line, so I really want to make sure I'm softening this one edge. I don't want it to look like a line, like an outline kind of thing, like a cartoon. So I'm softening that edge to make it look more natural. And I'm going to keep coming in and just little by little I will build up the um, the roughness of this uh, leather, get the values a little darker. This looks like it's almost fraying a little bit. Really quite dark down in here. And and all those layers of color that I put underneath, if I don't put my darks on too heavy, that will sort of radiate through and give me those uh, those changes in colors on some of this. Yeah, these bells were really neat. I, you know, if I had a use for them, like if I thought that I could actually decorate with them or something, I probably would have bought them, but oh, I have enough. <laughs> I have so much stuff. They're really cool, though. All right, so really getting in there with some of these darks. Um... I want to soften this one a little bit. So edges. Let's talk about edges for a second because the type of edge you use on things can make a big difference. Um, if I have everything with crisp edges, uh, it tends to look a little cardboard cutout. It looks like I cut it out and pasted it on my painting. 
and uh, that's definitely not a look I'm going for so I um, try and uh, try to have uh, softened edges as well as uh, a few crisp edges. So this belt buckle, let's, I think I went a little too dark there so I'm going to lighten it up a bit. It is lighter and all the time I'm painting I'm, I'm asking myself is this lighter or darker than what's behind it? Um, are they very similar in value? And these are questions that go through my head as I'm painting these things because um, that's what makes everything fit together is uh, all of the lights and darks working together appropriately. So this needs to be darker, maybe a little bit more brown, and I think I'm going to have to darken the, this part in here a little bit more. But, and I will come in and put a little bit more in there. This is one old buckle, whatever it is. I'm really curious now as to whether this is a, this actually is a sleigh bell or if it's just a bell from, I don't know, a cow or something. <laughs> All right. Um, so I on the leather itself, I need to start getting my things built up here a little bit more. And remember, this, this is a little bit more reddish than what the wood grain is. So I'm going to use a little bit more permanent rose in this combination. Lot my brush. And I want to get some real darks happening in here because this actually is pretty dark right here. There's um, a little thing that you can use to, to help you determine whether or not you're going dark enough with, uh, with your colors. And that is, let's see if I have one here. Um, hmm, I don't. One second. And I may have shown this in a previous um, demo, but um, two little pieces of squares. Okay, just cardboard, right? Some recycled stuff. And um, you can check, you need two of them because you need one of them for your reference picture. You need the other one for your painting. So if I want to see if I've gone dark enough here, I, I can put this on here and then I can put this other hole on my painting. And yes, I'm dark enough now. So that will tell me, that kind of isolates the color. Very often we think that we're dark enough, but that's only because, you know, whatever's surrounding it is, is really light in color. Um, and uh, so it, you know, it's perception, right? Relative value comparison, right? So it looks like it's, uh, looks like it's really dark and um, it's only because it's relative to the white. All right, so how do you decide, um, Karen's asking, how do I decide where to where I want the soft versus hard edges? Well, typically, most shadows start off very crisp next to the item that is creating the shadow, especially if it's like touching the tabletop. Um, the further out you go, the line becomes very soft because it's a little further away from um, from the the surface. So if you can see the shadow of my hand, if I if I hold my hand close to my painting, you can see the shadows around my fingers. But as I pull up, that gets softer and softer until like uh, it's a shadow, but boy, you can't make out what it is. So as you get closer to a surface, your um, your lines will be um, crisper. And the further away you go, uh, it uh, it uh, 
usually softens at the edges. Um, but overall, I would say mainly I just choose by um, like re referencing my picture. If it, I have to look and decide, is, is that, am I looking at a hard edge or am I looking at a soft edge? Whereas, uh, so right here, it's a little bit of a hard edge here, but this side was much softer. It didn't have that, that real crispness. So like the edge of the belt here, for example, I don't want that to look like a line, so I'm going to soften this edge. It tends to make it look a little bit more um, curved rather than just a line at it. So yeah, real simple solution with the um, uh, two little squares. Anybody can make them. Doesn't cost you anything. Just use uh, recycled paper or something. Uh, I just used a hole punch to punch a hole in the middle, but if you don't have a hole punch, then just cut a little square in the middle or just a little opening. And... Um, works very well. So there's a little bit of stitching on this uh, leather. Don't really see each stitch but I do see kind of a line. So I'm going to come along here and I see that this gets a little bit wider as it comes around and it also starts to fade so I don't I don't want to just automatically go along the whole top edge there. Um, that's not what I'm seeing. So I'm changing over to my reds here. And now in my, and I'm just turning this because it's an easier angle for me to work in. But here's where I need a, that little sliver, a gap in between to make it look like I've got that um, little bit of stitching. I'll just use a dry brush there because that's that's what I used to create that uh, that look before. And here, here I need to soften it because this is sort of um, curving a little bit like this um, strap isn't exactly flat. So I'm going to rinse, blot, and make sure I soften this edge. All right, so you get the feeling that it's it's actually curving like that. So once you start getting some of these darks in here, it really starts to, that's when it feels good. Like, it, you know, it starts to really look a little bit more like um, uh, like you want it to. So um, every stroke I put down, I double check my, my reference so that I don't create something that is odd, right? Like if I'm making it up or if I just paint what I think I see, it can look, I could be completely wrong. <laughs> so, and, and not really be properly describing the shape or the lighting. Uh, and lighting can make a big difference as to how you paint something. I'm going to come in here. This is got a little bit of a darkness there. And um, all right, so I can see I've got to get some darks. So when I'm when I'm working on an area like this. And I have, um, okay, so we've got some cracked leather here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the, um, <clears throat> the line here. And I will soften that edge. I'm getting croaky here. Um, get that edge there. But I really notice in my reference that, that the table underneath is quite a bit darker. So I need to come in here underneath this strap and really get this table darker down here. So my whole process is, is comparative, right? I compare everything to what I've already painted. And then I'm 
checking to see whether or not uh, it needs to be darker or lighter. Um, most case, <laughs> I usually tend to work towards darker, not um, come in really, really light or really dark at the beginning. I tend to build up to my darks. Although I do find it very helpful sometimes to get a few darks in early in your painting because it does make it easier to um, develop the, the correct values. Um, okay, so I want this to have a look of a little bit of a curve here, so it needs a little shadow there, not much, and i um, just going to rinse my brush and soften that a little bit. So just that a little bit of a shadow makes that piece of leather look like it's curling up, right? It's just the way the light is coming in. It's curling up. Subtle things sometimes, but they can make a big difference. All right, so now hopefully it's I've represented the feeling of that leather peeling up a little bit. And get the bolt, the hole in the strap a little bit darker here. And a couple of other things a little bit darker. <clears throat> And again, I don't want it to look like it has a line around it, so I'm going to soften this edge. All right, so that looks like it's getting there. Um, looks a lot different in my <laughs> in my printout than it does on this on this image here. So I think it needs to be a little more red. Red and raw sienna. There we go. Um, so now I'm just kind of glazing in a little bit more color here. Um, get this a little bit more red looking. And that's what I said, you know, I can come in and glaze colors in here and uh, get things a lot warmer or cooler um, if I need to. And what's underneath will still show, so. Just a thin wash of color in there, just really gets that a little bit more lively. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more on these, um, uh, this other section back here. And uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not even really sure what, uh, what I'm looking at here, but I'm going to paint what I see. Because I know for somebody who's actually used these, it would, it might be a necessary thing, right? It might be a, well something that uh, makes it right or wrong. So I see that this, oops, get this a little bit. This part needs to be darker for sure. Just gonna rinse and blot a little bit. And see that roughness is still going to show through. The first um, dry brushing that I did underneath is actually still going to show through. And it actually gets really dark right in here. So I'm going to have to put a lot more um, 
paints gray into this. thing about an old leather strap is that you sure don't it's not like a satin ribbon that needs to be like really um, polished and looking just so I can get away with quite a bit of uh, sort of roughness in this to add to the character I think All right. and right in here it's also going to get pretty dark in here so this is again one of those areas where I need to put some color in here and then soften that edge coming in to soften this edge Let's get a little bit more up in here maybe So every little shape I'm looking at, I'm not making any assumptions. I'm checking my reference all the time. This little area here, let's move this over a little bit. This little area here needs to be darker than the area below. So I need to come in and make sure that this is dark enough. There's a little bit of frayed stuff there, so I'll just put that in too. And I need to separate all of these sections now. So these are all going to get a little bit more attention. Oh, that one has to come over. Rinse and blot. And my paper towels tend to get really sopping wet pretty quick because I do a lot of blotting as I go along as I'm trying to control the, the amount of uh, moisture in my brush. All right, so I'm going to go a little more raw sienna on part of this because it is a different color right in here. Now that looks like a line and I don't want it to, so I need to come in and quickly do this so that I'm softening this edge. There we go. Um, so I'm just going to keep plugging away here at some of this. I'm going to do this um, strap that kind of comes in the opposite, like it goes across the cluster of straps <laughs> that are there. And it actually is a little bit light at the very top. It's got a little bit of a little bit of sheen on the leather part right here. So I'm going to leave that really light. Can't just treat it all the same. That's I guess my main message is don't treat everything the same. It might be all leather, but it's not all exactly the same leather. And the way the light hits it changes the the coloring, the the lightness or darkness of it, all that stuff. All right, so 
So I'm going to come across here and get this shadow a little stronger. But again, it's going to have to be softened a little bit just at the edge because it is not going to be, um, you know, just paint by number, fill it in and so on. So I'm going to rinse and blot and just soften this edge a little bit. Okay, I love the darks. Once the darks start going in, it starts really shaping up. So, a little more Payne's Gray here. And again, you know, there's, I just put in some color there, but I don't want to leave it like that. I have to... Uh, uh, soften these edges. Hi Jane. Lots of fun juggling around uh, all the classes now with the new restrictions. It's got everybody scrambling to uh, figure out what they're going to do. Here we go again, right? So once again, I'm putting in a little bit more dark and just softening the edge as I go. Just tickle it with a blotted brush. And okay, so it's starting to come, come alive. Uh, I need to have a little bit more, like this is obviously way too light yet. So I need to have some more color in here. So let's come in here and get a little bit more established here. I think I'm just going to do a wash over this right now. All of this needs a little bit of darkening down. A little bit more color to it. Alright, so when I look at my reference, I see that the table should be darker than this, whereas right now they're pretty much the same. So that tells me I'm going to have to come back in and um, uh, uh, build up my table a little bit more. So I will have to come in here and get a little bit more established. Watch where I'm putting my hand here. <laughs> Don't want to put it in my wet paint. All right. So some of the initial um, dry brush that I put underneath is, is actually showing through and it does give a little bit of uh, resemblance of, of wood grain, which is what I want. But leaving a few lights is important. So again, this this part of the table has to be darker than the bell itself. So I've got to come in here and build this up. And I may come in a whole bunch of times to really fully build this up, but um, you can see it slowly build. A little bit of extra dark right here, so just add some of that in. But always mindful of the shape of the bell. <laughs> Don't want that to uh, end up looking um, overly dark. Now there's actually some scratches in the table here, I'm seeing. So there's a couple of ways I could go about doing this, but I think I'm going to scrape them in. 
I'm going to actually scratch them into my watercolor. Um, I think that's probably going to be the easiest way for me to do this. So if I come in with, um, you know, my wash here. Now it's not a perfect wash. It's a little bit uh, um, skipping over my paper a little bit. The textures. And um, I'm going to see if I can actually scratch away. I'll use a little palette knife for this. And uh, if I can scrape away some of this. There, some little scratches in the table. Um, it's, sometimes it's an easy way, and you can see that I'm hold. I'm not holding this by the handle here. That I'm actually holding it on, like really close. So my thumb is actually using a little bit of pressure on the palette knife to uh, scrape away a bit. But the timing of anything like this has to be just so because you need it when it's at that sort of tacky stage. See, right down here, it's all dry, so it's not going to do anything. I also don't want to scrape it away to make it look white. Um, I, I just want it to look old. So as I come down and I want to add a little bit more, um, say, richness to this table with color, um, I could do a few more scratches in the table, add to the old. And like I said, this um, this particular set of bells was in a shop in Waterloo called Linen and Lore and um, they, had, they have all their um, all their items all displayed on old antique furniture and stuff like that so it's really really quite a charming little store if you have a chance to check it out so I am going to scrape away a little bit more as long as it's at that sort of tacky stage I can scrape away you know, the little antiquing kind of marks on the table. It all adds. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to just add in a few a little bit more shading on the side here, perhaps. And maybe down here too. Bring a little bit more this coloring down here. Kind of play down that uh, dark, that strong shape in the corner there. I don't want to really draw too much attention to that. It's in a corner for heaven's sake, so don't want to. I don't want the viewer to look there. So I'm gonna. And I can come in with a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed into those colors there and uh, start to indicate some knots. A couple of knots in the wood. Real telltale sign of it being old. And um, I can even dry brush a little bit more texture in here. So I'll build this up until it really has that nice wooden look to it. But I like the scratching. Um, really gives a nice uh, sort of antique -y look about it. Just coming in with a little bit more dark here and there. Where it's a little bit darker in a few places. Um, I think that's too dry up there. I can't do anything there now. No. So a little bit more dark on my knots. Blot it with paper towel if I need to. Um, but um, yeah, so then I will just uh, sort of lean back and, and evaluate and see whether or not I need to um, 
tone down some more stuff, but I, I definitely need to do some more definition up in the uh, this section up here. Chapter 11. Watching the time here. Don't want to use up your whole day. And um, all right, so I want to come in on some of this and get a little bit more color going. But it's pretty patchy. As you can see, this, this is like looking really patchy here. So I'm going to use again the side of my brush and just let it skip over the texture of the paper and give me that sort of that old look. Soften a bit of it, maybe. And the one above as well. Remember to keep the, you know, that that other edge of the the um, strap uh, um, lighter because it's you know it's a different plane and it's actually um, facing up towards the light so it would of course be lighter. So coming into all of these shapes in here and seeing if I can we get these looking a little bit more finished. So that's now looking like they're pretty separate. Now here I have to start separating some of this as well. So, And I had already opted to take out some of this uh, rope, I guess it is. Um, just I find it a little bit distracting, so I'm just taking that out. This, I think, believe connects to the other side here, so I'm going to leave that. And it looks like there's some stitching or something here. And it's actually a darker thread, so I can just come in and paint that in straight, positive painting. And yeah, whole day painting is a good thing. But I think I'm going to have to try and get some sleep at some point today. I'm going to have to have a nap. Didn't even know insomnia was uh, a possible side effect of the booster, but there you go. So I normally sleep like a like a log. I'm a really good sleeper, and uh, this one just had me flip flopping the whole night long. All right, so I'm coming up. I'm just continuing to darken a few things. Uh, really. Get things built up and if I need to check don't forget you can just take um, a couple of these little um, squares and compare I'm pretty close there um,
Yeah, pretty good. So, um, just a couple of little finishing touches, and uh, I think we'll probably wrap this one up for today. Um, I'm going to come over here into some of my brassy colors. I'm going to tone this down a little bit. Just really get this uh, pushed back a little bit more. The brassy colors, I used actually a little bit of Ariolan, um, raw sienna, and some Payne's Gray here to create that that look. Uh, but again, I'm using kind of a the side of my brush to get the, uh, you know, that texture that's on the bell, because it's not a shiny bell and it's, it wouldn't, wouldn't look that way. All right, so um, maybe a little bit right here. And I would say a little bit darker on the bell itself. So this bell needs a little bit more um, darkness. By increasing the darkness in some areas, it automatically makes the lighter areas feel lighter. So in terms of things looking um, dimensional, um, you know, like people often try ask, well, I can't get the highlight bright enough. How do you get your highlights bright enough? The answer is I don't. I actually just make my darks darker. And relatively, like comparatively, it looks a lot lighter. So if I make some of these a little darker, you know, this highlight's going to show up a little bit more. So. All right. Um, I do find this area here on the leather strap a little bit bright, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Easier to tone it down than to brighten it up. That's always, I always err on the side of caution there when I'm doing that so that, you know, I don't make things too dark because it's harder to get them light. So if I go too light, I can darken them easy. All right, so that's a, that's feeling a little better, and um, all right. So let's uh, let's take a look at this without all the tape. The tape always makes it look kind of ugly. So I'm going to take this tape off, and we'll see what it finally looks like. I actually have two layers of tape on here, but I'll take one off so you can see how it looks without. And I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good. There we go. So there's our uh, sleigh bells. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't don't forget um, I do have all my new um, January, February. Um, workshops up on my website so um, right here if you want to check that out and uh, yeah so thank you again for joining me I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas um, Hanukkah whatever you I know Hanukkah's already done but uh, um, hope you have a holiday whatever you celebrate so stay safe everybody and we'll see you next time thank you